Let me tell you a little bit about Ira, uh, CEO and music producer. Since his foray into commercial music production began years ago, Ira Antelis has created some of the most iconic brand anthems in the world, including Be Like Mine and I'm Loving It. His, uh, his experience includes a decade as music director at Leo Burnett, one of the largest advertising agencies in the world, producing music for such iconic brands as McDonald's, Hallmark, Allstate, Samsung, and Coca-Cola. While there, he headed the agency's Artist in Residence program, an industry first which brought up and coming and established artists such as Neo, Fall Out Boy, Lifehouse, the Allman Brothers, and Colby Calais directly into the agency to perform for and collaborate with the creative staff. Now, that's a pretty smart guy. Ira has also worked with or had songs recorded or sung by artists such as Mark Anthony, Christina Aguilera, Enrique Iglesias, and B.B. King. He's the co-owner and music director of Gyra Productions. And Gyra Productions is a full-service audio post-production music house based in Chicago. Sorry. I just want to see if it was the industry guest that's coming. See, if I didn't have my phone, I, I wouldn't have, uh, I, I, I said, oh, Shelly, should I bring you a reel of, uh, or something of my commercials? If I didn't have my phone up, I, I wouldn't have been, I said, yeah, please bring your commercials. Uh, so, Gyro Productions is a full-service audio post-production and music house based in Chicago. Uh, they specialize in original music, music supervision, audio post, digital cinema production. Uh, his composers have written for some of the biggest brands in the world, including McDonald's, Allstate, Comcast, Chevy, Buick, Hallmark, Procter & Gamble, Philip Morris, he's brought his reel. By leveraging an enormous music library, as well as relationships with record labels, publishers, and managers, this networking we're talking about, uh, he can find the best track at the best price. Over the last few years, we have handled a wide range of projects from simple placements and licenses, remember you were talking about that, about the simple ones and the larger ones, um, to in-depth corporate music programs requiring 50 plus music tracks. Our music supervision and corporate consulting clients include McDonald's, Philip Morris, Allstate, Delta Faucets. We have two audio post studios, talking about somebody wrapping up the wire at the end of the night. He's got two studios to do that. Uh, we have two audio post studios located in downtown Chicago. Both are 5.1 surround capable and can contain state-of-the-art equipment, talented engineers, and video games. Say hi again to Ira. done, and I've explained it to the, uh, to the class, is that we're, we're working from this book uh, that Madonna's manager put together, Guy Osiri, on the record, and he asked 12 questions of 150 of the most successful people in music business. It doesn't matter, of all the people, when I took the temperature of the room, of who's the writer, who's the producer, who's the engineer, everybody's in here, so, you know, you can get your Chris Blackwell, you've got, you know, our artists, uh, Lenny Kravitz, you know, in, in each category, uh, Puffy, they, it doesn't matter what your discipline is somebody is in here for your flavor. So I, I suggest you pick up this book. But we're going to do the exact same thing here. And so I'm going to do a little bit of interviewing with you, okay, Ira? And I sent you, I sent you those 12 questions. So. Yeah, and I will do one, but not recently. No problem. I'm sure, I'm sure we're going to get it done. How's everything going? You all right? It's a little crazy, but it's good. Yeah, yeah, thank you for taking time out. Are we, is everybody day. in music here, or? Yeah, this, every, everybody's in music, and this, this, this course, and let me officially introduce you to Jerry Brindisi. This is his course, okay. and it's the uh, art and business of music, uh, okay. music recording. Uh, this is Philippe, the chairperson of the department, That's and my good friend Joe in the back, who is the uh, uh, counterpart at the music department. And so they're the ones who've warmly invited me to come. And I reached out to friends who said, I'd love to come join you. And I can't tell you how happy I am you're here. I really appreciate your time. Well, the most important thing is when I moved to Chicago, my first job was teaching at Columbia College. That's a fact. For really? Real result. really? So I started my career here, right here, um, probably over 20 years ago. How about that? Family, so, family comes home. Except was, the building was on 11th Street. The, the building has the Getz Theater. That was one building. So that's fascinating. That's that's how it all began, right here. Wow, wow. And you wow. did a job, and that's just where I ended up. Welcome home. So, it's, so that's why I have to come back. Welcome home. <laughs> okay, so, uh, and you had, recently had a little baby, right? I'm a 14 year old and an 18 month old. Yes. 18 month, yeah, yeah. One doesn't talk to me, the other doesn't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> your biggest hit yet, right? That's your biggest hit. Okay, cool. 
So we're, we're, we're going to go through this, and I'll, I'll, I'll interview, and then, uh, as I said, uh, we're going to do a question and answer. Sure. Maybe we can uh, ask you to share your advice and your guidance to these students, Absolutely. and uh, we can get some questions from them. And did you have something that we would be able to look at as well? No, I did bring um, a drive with some spots. If you have time, I could show some commercials. But... We'd like to make the time. Okay. Okay. So, so here we go. Here's the 12 questions. Number one. Did you have a mentor or someone who inspired you? If so, what did you learn from that person? Wow. Uh, I'm not quite sure in the, in the music industry you have one mentor uh, from the side I grew up in. Um, when, I, when I decided I want to be in music, uh, even though everybody said that was not, not a good thing, um, I'm trying to remember his name, because I went to the State University of New York, and there was a very well-known classical composer. Can everybody hear back there? I could go on. No, 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 I just want to make sure. You, you all get in it? Yeah. Okay. So there was a very well-known composer, and um, I took his class, and he just inspired me to write music. And it, um, that coupled with, um, if you're, do you, do you all play, or you just want to music business? So, 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 yes, okay. Well, if you play music, uh, especially classical music or pop music, you spend hours in practice rooms. And when I got to Binghamton, um, I thought, well, I, I wanted to be a jazz musician. Um, and I would walk around the practice rooms, and one of the first days I was there, I started listening to this person playing piano, and I thought, well, I'm never going to be a jazz piano player. Um, and he sort of actually became my mentor. His name is Lee Musiker. He's probably, he's Tony Bennett's musical director, piano player, one of the most brilliant, brilliant musicians. And he was sort of my first mentor because he would sit and talk about music and he would explain things to me. Uh, and then I, I sort of followed his path even though I didn't become a jazz musician. Um, and then after I, I ended up going to music school and then um, I sort of got into the jingle industry and then my next sort of role model or mentor was um, a man named Sid Walsh, uh, whom none of you probably know, but he was responsible for You Deserve a Break to McD at McDonald's and many, many other campaigns before your time. But he sort of taught me the ins and outs of commercial music and how it all, or how it all worked. So I think he was, um, so he was a mentor on that level. Um, I think in terms of two more mentors, uh, I think Billy Joel changed my life. Um, when, uh, I can't remember, what was the album, uh, with the, I want you just the way you are. Uh, uh, Don't go change. It wasn't, whatever that album was, um, I just listened to it, and I thought, wow, you know, I, I want to do that. Um, and it inspired me to really devote my life to uh, writing, creating, producing music, which is, uh, I've been doing for, you know, 25, 30 years. And then lastly, I think um, directly was a teacher at Manhattan School of Music where I went who uh, taught me music and spent a lot of time with me, um, just showing me, you know, because I studied classical music and had a major influence in my life. So those were probably four or five influences. Um, Fantastic. But you're always listening, I mean, as, as a group of Beatles, you know, it's listening and studying. It's, it's, I think it's hard to say one mentor, but many. Interesting, we talked about the mentor-disciple relationship in the beginning of our class, didn't we? Nasty. Okay, question number four. What elements of your job make you want to go to work every day? Well, my job has sort of changed. Uh, 10, year, 10, 15 years ago, uh, every day I just wrote and produced music um, for com uh, commercials, records, and whatever it was. Uh, and then when I went to Leo Burnett, I, it became more of the the business end also. So as I tell many people, there are times that I don't touch a piece, I don't touch the piano or whatever for a couple of days. So it's sort of making deals. And But I think what makes me want to go to work every day is today will be a typical day. And I'll go through it fast. So, <clears throat> so I, uh, I got to work and I had a half hour, I have 30 minutes and I'm working on this uh, piece, of, uh, I'm working on this music for this movie. So. I needed to work on the theme song, so I did that from 10.30 to 11. And then 11 o'clock, <clears throat> I'm in charge of working on a website for uh, a music website. So we had a meeting from 11 to 12.30. And then 12.30, I went uh, to a new music company, which you can all find online in Chicago, called Audio Tree Music, which um, I've been consulting on and developing. And we had a, a meeting because we just signed our first artist. It's, it's not my company, but it's sort of 
I run it with the person who goes. Then I went back to my office, uh, worked on a jingle, called you, and then I came here. So, and then when I get that, the, the, when I'm done here, then I go back. So, the, the great thing about my life, and I, I, I always say my life has had many stages, and I tell people all the time, if you're fortunate enough to find something you love to do in your life, you should thank whoever your Lord is every day. Because what happens in life is when things are going well, it flies. And it flies fast, and you're like, where, where do these 10 or 15 or 20 years go? And I've had many of those in my life where I'm like, what happened? It's gone. So where I'm at right now, I think I might enjoy it a little more because there's not a day that goes by that I don't really appreciate every moment of the day. And when I, you know, when I go to sleep at night, I'm like, wow, that was a great day. And I really, you know, I don't take it for granted and I just appreciate it more than I think I did when I had a lot of earlier success. Sounds like Ira wrote my address, doesn't it? <laughs> we talked about these things a little bit earlier. Uh, okay, that's, that's, that's really beautiful. It's, it's great that you feel that. I feel that too. I, I really understand. Last question on this set is, uh, it doesn't have to be 10 things. What 10 things could be helpful to someone breaking into the business? So it doesn't have to be 10. Not what, not what, 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 what five or six or 10 or whatever, if you can do 10, things could be helpful to uh, our Columbia students breaking into the business? Well, you know. Take it from the top. The, um, you know, when you, when you don't succeed at first, it's, at least for me, what it did, it was like, it just drove me to a place that when I had the opportunity that I wasn't going to miss it. So, so when, when I started my own music company, I had a saying, I said, I would out hour anybody. If you put in a five, I'll put in 10. If you put in 15, I'll put in 20. And, and we would start, I mean, this is music advertising for the most part. So people went home at 9 o'clock at night. We would start sessions at midnight. We worked literally 24-7. And you can ask anybody who worked with me. It was like, no matter what you do, I'm going to do it harder. Maybe not better, but I, my effort will be far superior to yours. And that, like when, when I have a lot of kids who work for me, and they're like, man, I'm tired. I'm like, you're tired. You don't know what tired is. When, after you stay up for three days, you can come back and tell me you're tired. Don't, don't tell me you're tired, because then I'll find somebody who's not. So, so when you all want to go out and have fun and stuff like that, think of it this way. For every time you go out and you're wasting your time, there is somebody who wants to do what you do, who is home or somewhere working at their skill. So when you, well, if things don't go right, the only place you need to look is at yourself. So the first thing I would say is out hour anybody. If you find something you love to do, you make up your mind that you're gonna put every single hour in and give up your life to do it. And if you don't wanna do that, then you shouldn't do this. That's one. Um, what's the question? That's, 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 a, that's a dime. That's, a, that's the truth. Okay, uh, 10 things that could be helpful to our Columbia students uh, breaking into the business. Don't be afraid. Uh, and I usually even have this problem. Like, if, if you need to call, some people are like, well, I don't want to call. My daughter does that all the time because with the texting thing, I'm like, call, pick up the phone and call. You know, and it sort of travels into business. If like, if you want to get to somebody, uh, here's what I say, that there are people that want to reach me every day. Many people that want to reach me every day. But there are only a few who do. And sometimes the reason is because they call me 20 times a day. And at some point, I got to call them back because they're just persistent, you know? Or they'll come to my office and wait downstairs and the security will call me. I'm not, I'm not suggesting you do that, but what I'm saying is that the second lesson would be if you, if you know the person that you think you would be really, really good working for or have something to show, don't give up. Go and do that. Okay, that's number two. I, I would say that in, in, in those four or five pieces of, uh, of advice, that's, that's what the price is. You know, I mean, that's, that's, and particularly the first thing that Ira said is something I really believe too. I told you my experience at Berkeley, uh, you know, it wasn't uh, practicing for two hours and then going out and hanging out. It was practicing for 18 hours and passing out and then doing this very same thing and doing it not for a week, doing it for four years. That's how I ended up becoming a guitar player. 
It took, it took that kind of effort. And I saw people at Berkeley uh, that were displaying the same kind of effort. I always see the same pimply face New York saxophone guy ripping through giant stuff, bebop scales, just 20 hours. I thought he was crazy. He was always there. He was always practicing. And he was a monster. He was just that great. So, and that's what it took. So, uh, you know, this kind, of, uh, this kind of advice is really indispensable. Is, is it something that's new to you, uh, new information, or just reinforcing that which your, your uh, uh, instructor Jerry has told you and, and what you're learning at Columbia? Is it, is, it, is it familiar stuff to you, reinforcing some of the things that you believe in yourself? OK, cool. Well, what, what I'd like to do is I, I want to leave enough time for our questions, questions and answers, because you know, that way we can get into a dialogue.